Nothing. I had to sit next to Barry. I mean, no. Patricia, if I probably did this, you would want you. <laughs> <laughs> Create a little thing. Lower York. down. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that should do it. Dreams are made of New York. Can you hear me? He wants us to do. Wants us to all come together and sing. Yeah. Have you asked Dion? Have you asked yeah. her about it? And she said, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll get together some time. I am Whitney Houston. I'm the daughter of Sissy and John Houston. And Dion is my first cousin. And very proud of that. And Dee Dee is my cousin. And I have a whole family of some really incredible, talented people. Whitney used to scream in the basement all the time because I had... <laughs> I had mirrors down because that's where we rehearsed in my house. Then when she wanted to sing, she would make us go downstairs and she would be singing <laughs> with, with the little, and she'd make us get brooms and play the guitars and play the drums and all that stuff. I always heard music in my home. Uh, my brother started much earlier. We were, we were the younger ones, Michael and I. Gary started singing very, very, very young, so I heard him all the time sing. Oh, I love gospel. Uh, it's in my soul. It's in my soul, it's in my heart. Gospel will and has always been my first love. That's what taught me to sing, was gospel. We as a family have, have put so much into the, not only into the gospel industry, but into music itself. This was a gift that Whitney gave all of her aunts and uncles that says, with much love and admiration, love Whitney. This here is Nana, which is Dion's mom mm -hmm. on the end here. That's Aunt Sissy, that's Whitney's mom. Right here is my mom. Right here is Judy Clay. She's a cousin. And back here is Larry's father, Uncle Larry. Hmm? Uncle Larry, that's Judy Clay, Uncle Larry. Right here is their dad, Nicholas Drinker. That's Nicholas Drinker. And right here is Aunt Reby, the prayer warrior, Marie Epps. Uh, they always wore their robes when they did everything. So that was his signature with DS up at the top, Drinker Singers. When I heard the sisters, you know, Aunt Reby with the tambourine, you know, it was glorious. I'm telling you, really glorious. Those women had it going on. Uh, gospel music is my life. I love gospel music because I love the Lord. I love to hear my mother sing gospel. Tell you about Sissy. <laughs> Sissy Houston is my aunt. I grew up with her and love her to death. And what can I tell you? That's family. Um, I traveled a lot with Dion as a youngster. It was always music in our house, always. I just heard gospel all in my family. You know, we'd have Christmas dinner and then we'd sing. We'd have Thanksgiving dinner and then we'd all sing. So it was a common thing in my family to hear singing. So Dion had a group called the Gospel Lairs. Mm -hmm. We started the Gospel Lairs, I think we were about 15, 16 years old. And we did exactly what the, the drinkers did. Dion's mom, Aunt Lee, being the matriarch of the family, she told them, make, make your decision. You know, it's either going to be you're singing for the Lord, you know, or, you, or you're singing for the world. Aunt Lee was very strict and she, she was, it was forbidden. You know, at that particular time, for her to even think about singing, you know, uh, you know, R&B or pop. I sing popular music and I sing gospel music. I sing jazz. I sing everything. I sing music. The fact that Dion had a popular voice, the fact that um, Bacharach and David wrote so many beautiful things for her, and the chemistry was so well, and not only trusted them, you know, I think that's why she blessed, you know, the whole mission, because Dion was singing about something. Dion earned her way through school by doing sessions. We uh, did our first background session for the Drifters, a song called Mexican Divorce that was written by Bert Backrack and, and Bob Hilliard. And I was approached after that by Bert to ask if I would do more demonstration records of songs that he'd be writing with a new songwriting partner, Hal David. The first recording I did was Don't Make Me Over. The moment I wake up but God, those are the days. I, I love those days, traveling oh, yeah. with Dion on the road. Whitney, I used to take with me, my only girl, 
during the summer all the time. And she didn't want to come home at the end of the summer to go to school. <laughs> Mr. Whitney's mother, Susan Houston, was a very old friend of mine. We've sung together many, many times. She has done a lot of background work with me and um, accompanied me on a number of dates. And we're old and very good friends. And she used to bring Whitney to some of my recording sessions. Oh, no. When I first heard Aretha sing, I heard Aretha's voice. It's just something that she has. And the way she makes people feel was what I wanted to have. If I could ever be a singer, that's the way I want to make people feel. I want to have that kind of gut feeling that where I can make myself feel good and make everybody else feel good. The moment I wake up. Whitney used to scream in the basement all the time because I had <laughs> I had mirrors down because that's where we rehearsed in my house. Then when she wanted to sing, she would make us go downstairs and she would be singing <laughs> with, with the little, and she'd make us get brooms and play the guitars and play the drums and all that stuff. I first started singing in my basement <laughs> um, with a broom. But you just, you know, you did it because she would cry. Mostly when you were kids. You would do what you wanted? She would cry, you know what I'm saying? We hate to see her cry, so we would spend <laughs> hours down that basement playing the broom and playing the, 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 the garbage can or whatever while she sang. So she was always around. They were always around in it. And um, she was frisky and fresh, you know, like little girls are. Beautiful little girl. And um, she loved it. And she was screaming, ah! And my husband said, tell her, shut up, Rob. I said, I'll leave her alone. Maybe one day she'll be a singer. <laughs> and of course. They came for me at 14 when they heard me sing with my mother at Town Hall in New York. And they wanted me to sign a contract then, but my mother said no, that I had to graduate high school, that it was still more for me to learn. And um, I was glad she did that, because there was a lot to learn, you know? And after that, at 19, I signed with Arista Records' Clive Davis. Clive saw me at a club called Sweetwaters. I can remember that first moment when I saw Whitney at Sweetwaters singing two songs in her mother's act and getting that proverbial tingle down my spine when I knew that I wanted so badly to work with her. At that point in time, my solo was the greatest love of all, ironically enough. <laughs> Sometimes I think about Clive and, and, and my conversations during, <laughs> during the album makings, and there have been times where he, he and I just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And after a while, I find it that to be funny because me and Clive have been together for 25, um, going on 30 years. Therefore, there have been moments and times where he just goes, you know what, you're just impossible. And I go, out of all these people and all the walls you have on these people, you have Sly Stone, you got Janis Joplin, you got Art Funk, Simon and Garfunkel. I'm the most impossible one. And he goes, yeah, and I just thought that was the funniest thing. That's funny. After his long career as, as an executive and someone who knows how to take a singer and a song and put them together, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, and just knows how to go out there and get that, get that raw talent, I, thought, I just thought, wow, I'm impossible. Right after we signed together, I did go on the Merv Griffin show. And I did introduce her because Merv gave me the opportunity of bringing any new discovery onto a show and launching that artist on national television. My band was like really slow in the tempo. And I never forget, my mother comes from behind the stage. If you see the tape, you'll crack up. She's behind the stage and she takes the control of the band and she starts directing the band to the temple that she wants it to go to. She, she feels me, she's a singer, so she feels me. And she knows I'm struggling with it and she starts doing the band. And it's the most hysterical thing you ever want to see. My mother in the background doing the band like this and I'm singing and it's really kind of cute. There was Lena. From the time my album came out, the first album, we were gone. We were gone. From the first to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth album, from To My Love Is Your Love, we were, we were, we were on our way. <clears throat> I'll Always Love You was an amazing accomplishment and took my career to a whole nother scale. 
Do you ever want to do that again? I mean, do you ever want to be back there? Mm -mm. Why? Been there, done that. It's hard work. Been there, done that. She's older now. She's much more mature. She's a mother. She's trying, you know, she's got other things she's branching off into as well. So it's hard work. The yeah. body can't handle that anymore. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. a lot. Before I was running like you couldn't believe. I mean, it was constantly going, constantly going, constantly. I can remember buying my house off when I was on the road and decorating it on the road. It was there for a, six months to eight months and I hadn't even lived in it yet. You still sing it? Mm-hmm. And you still sing it? Mm -hmm. Where do y'all sing it? Off stage. Right in this house. In this house together. <laughs> And we had good times when we got together yeah. with the whole very we very tight the family. Mm-hmm. Very tight family. Um, what was I saying? Oh man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it was you're talking about. He's got, he's, <laughs> Gary's got a lot of questions he's asking. Gary, where'd you get all these questions from? You thought about this like for two weeks, didn't you? I thought about this for more than two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no two week project. I know that's right. My family ain't no two week project. Trust me when I tell you. <laughs> so it was always somebody singing something at any time. And uh, we are just all sang together. Well, there was always singing in my home. Um, my, my mother and her sisters and brothers had a gospel group called the Drinker Singers. Um, incredible, incredible uh, uh, sound, incredible talent. I am right now the matriarch of the Drinkard family. The Drinkard singers were my aunts and uncles and my mom. It was seven of them. My Aunt Rebe, my Aunt Annie, my Uncle Larry, my Uncle Nick, my Uncle Hansy, my Uncle Willie, and my mom. And they were the gospel singers and they're known as Drinkard singers. They were perceived, you know, any of us, um, and it was very moving. Because the way people were saying, you related to the drinkers singers, it, it meant something. And the fact that they were brothers and sisters really made it very effective because they were singing from the heart. And to me, this had a major impact on me, so I'm certain that when they gave performances, uh, it certainly had an impact on the audience. I started singing when I was five years old. They used to put me up on a stool, and I had a very deep contralto voice. We used to wear little navy blue pleated skirts and white blouses, me and my sister, because she was the oldest one, and two boys. We sang quartet, and my other sister, Marie, taught us, and Dion's mother was our manager. <laughs> and. Uh, we go and sing, and when we'd put, we go out and sing. I was a little thing like that, so they would put me on a stool, and I was I liked it when when we rocked. My skirt used to go like that, and I wanted to look back at. <laughs> so I got hollow at a lot of times, but look at stop looking at your skirt. My first experience was with really recognizing God for who He is, because I was trying to understand why they in there, they in there shouting and, and singing and. You know, playing that piano and sweating and just carrying on. And I said, what's going on here? And, and, and we would always sneak up to the porch and we would peek in, you know, and watch them. And I, I wrote about it in detail. I would watch them. Particularly, I would watch, of course, my father because he played the piano. And my Aunt Sissy because she had this beautiful, still does, this beautiful high, high voice. And, and I would just be watching, 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 learning. And I, I, I felt the spirit of what they were feeling behind the conviction of how they were feeling and how they were saying it. This is one of the famous drinker songs when they went through the church and they started singing. They got to this song right here and everybody stood up. And Rebe took the mic. You had to open up the back door because you know she was going to sing and run. Because when the spirit came down the corner and, and Rebe just did what she had to do. And we're going to try to do a small amount of it as best as we possibly can. Calling Jesus, Mara, come on, Jesus, Mara, meet you, Jesus, Mara, calling Jesus, Mara, oh, though I know you got me, every day you walk beside me, I'm calling Jesus, Mara, oh, calling Jesus, Mara, calling Jesus, Mara, calling Jesus, 
Mara, need you, Jesus. Mara, oh, Jesus. Walk beside me. Jesus. Every day you got me. I'm called Jesus. Mara, oh, he's Mara. He's Mara. He's Mara. He's Mara. Rock, 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 rock. That's where we got our strength from, you know, the connection of our families and the drinkers and right. you know, the, the whole the whole drinker family, you know, kind of embedded that in us. Gospel to them was, was was the utmost. And my Aunt Lee, she kept she kept a stern whip. Wherever she went, you listened. You paid attention to what she had to say and when she had to say it. Well, Mommy was the, um, well, she managed the group, basically. She was the eldest in the family of the girls and uh, she took care of everybody. Right now, I want to just call my other baby. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, then sometimes it moves up the up. <laughs> but mama looked at her and said, now listen. <laughs> and that's it. And I'll tell you the truth. Y'all excuse me what I say. Honey, I'll get their bunkers in a minute. <laughs> They know it because I love them, they know I love them, and there's nothing in the world that God could help me not do. Well, I, wouldn't let, I wouldn't do for them, because they are mine, and I'm very proud of both of them. But the spark plug was Ann Reby. Yeah. Yes. Ann Reby was the spark plug behind it. Why do you say that? Well, because it's like you take a plug and plug it in, and things work. Okay, you take Ann Reby and put Ann Reby in the midst of it, it worked. Because if it didn't work, Ann Reby wasn't there. What we're going to do here is a, a song that we're going to do a short medley. First one is what was by Aunt Reby. Aunt Reby sang this song. And then the second one was sung by my mom. My father is rich in houses and land. I know he holds the wealth of a wide world in his hands. He has rubies and diamonds, silver and gold, and the riches are all so many. I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. I've got Jesus as my savior. I'm a child of the king. Well, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go. I can go anywhere. Tis heaven, wherever I'll be. If the Lord is there. You know I count, I count in a privilege him. And his cross, oh, his, his cross to bear If Jesus, if Jesus goes with me, me I'll go I can go anywhere I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go Everything that the drinkers sang, that, that Dion or any of our family would sing in church, my father, he was, he was a pianist, a organist. So he played, we heard it all night. We heard his fit stomping oh, all night. Yeah. He playing, time. he's playing. So I still hear that in my mind. Lots of times when I get up to sing, I still hear my dad. Mm -hmm. They had one piano player, which is Nicholas Drinker, and he could play, he learned to play by ear. He had no piano lessons and he learned to play by ear, and he was their piano player. And he could play anything, I mean, under the sun. So a lot of history behind the crew. Each had their own individual careers, you know, but collectively they were really a phenomenal sound. They were strictly gospel, strictly gospel. I mean, you know, the old-fashioned gospel singers, you know, the drinker singers were. My mother, although very um, embedded and very um, true to gospel, my mother expanded her, her singing ability. She began to sing um, with other um, artists, 
uh, as a background singer, she started a group called the Sweet Inspirations. And you know the story of Sweet Inspirations, they history, you know. Cats, these uh, marquee singers, Elvis, you know, Aretha and, and, and Lou, they didn't want anybody but the Sweetest Ration to sing background for them in the studio and on stage. That uh, Sissy um, really came on the scene with um, the high, high note in Aretha Franklin's Ain't No Way. I made up all the backgrounds and whatnot. So my husband said, why don't you do a, a obligata? I said, I don't do no obligata. But anyhow, I did. I did one take. And that was the one that made history. Elvis called us and, and uh, I said, Elvis. And, you know, but we went. It was history. Loved him. I loved him. He was gorgeous in the first place. And plus, he was a good singer. And wish you there was no music that we could not do. The only one who could ever reach me was the son of a preacher man. He's incredible. I don't know how she does it, but she does. She sings like she sang when she was 30 years old, 25 years old. She just has a conviction to her beliefs and she does not stray from that. She stays very dedicated and she has been a force in my life that has always been there to kind of see me through. Her mother did good and the aunts, uh, the family, um, as it relates to Whitney, because no matter how much she will kick and scream about doing something, she will always do what is right. She will always do what is right and just. She might kick and scream, you know, doing it, but she will ultimately do, make the right decision and do what is right. When you say about Whitney, Whitney was the only one. You, you, you know, they tell her, that's the only one with a problem now. Everybody, everybody that went out there had a problem. You know what I'm saying? Some was worse than hers. Well, we've had our bumps, and don't get me wrong. Everything has its, its obstacles, but they can be moved, <laughs> you know? Um, we've managed to, um, no matter what, keep it together and stay together. That's, that's what brother and sister and, and lovers, I think, is all about. That was my daughter. I loved her. I supported her. And when I figured it, it was time to go get her. That's exactly what I did. And I'm not ashamed of it. I'm really proud of myself. I love her to death. And each, everyone had had what. I went and got all of it. That's what it needed. Because I was just that kind of mother. What? Everybody have troubles. And the thing is, if you've got faith, you can get through them. That's what you have to have. It's faith and fight, the, fight it all the way. And I'm a fighter. I've always been one. We did a song for Tyler Perry's Daddy's Girls. And my, all my family was there. Everybody was there. And it was a moment that I needed my family at very much. Why? Um, you ask a lot of questions. Um, well, because I, I was going through a divorce at the time, and I had moved out to California with my daughter, and um, my family came there. And it was just, oh, I can't begin to tell you what the joy in my soul and it made me feel to see my little cousins sing, my little baby cousins sing, who have incredible voices, you know, just my daughter. Um, my, 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 my first, second, third cousins were all there. 
It was just an incredible moment that I will never forget, ever forget. So to you, Bobby, Christina, and to all those young girls who are dreaming that dream, but maybe thinking they aren't good enough, I think Whitney would tell you, guard your bodies and guard the precious miracle of your own life. And then sing your hearts out, knowing that there's a lady in heaven who is making God himself wonder how he created something so perfect. From Sissy to um, Dion to Whitney, you know, they're all from pop, you know, R&B, but particularly pop, no matter what, you know, being out there, if they stray to the left or whatever, they, they know they know where their source of strength is and that spirituality. And it brings them, it keeps them grounded no matter what happens, you know, with the mistakes that are made, it's that strong sense of spirituality and that's their foundation, that drinkard foundation. Those people have a specialty when it comes to that and it's, it's phenomenal. No matter what we're going through, no matter what it is, um, my family, as far as um, being a family, has always been, I think, uh, my rock, you know, my, my, my stability. I know that I have a talented and very <coughs> loving family, I, you know, not that we don't have our, our difficulties or we don't go through our things, but we manage to come together and manage to hug each other and say we love each other, you know. But gospel is, 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 is a soothing, that's all I can say, it just gives me joy in my soul. is an entity unto its own. It's the music that I remember singing and getting such a joy, unspeakable, a joy that, that I cannot quite explain. It's fulfilling. It is um, nourishing. It comforts. It um, talks about real life and how you can overcome those obstacles or those problems or whatever you're going through. So I used to sit and listen to two, three hours a day, listening to a lot of women who, who sang gospel. So I was able to, you know, you know, learn, you know, how to sing through that. And I just, I listened to, you know, Aretha, I listened to Dion, I listened to my mother. I listened to all, you know, all the old Roberta Flack. Well, I'm not a gospel singer, but in my opinion, music, period, is gospel. Please welcome the wonderful, the incredible, It's a feeling, again, it's something that you have to trust. You have to trust in the spirit and the higher power. You have to trust and believe that there is someone, you know, that is in charge of all of this, you know, that, that orders our steps, you know, that, that tells us which way to go. From what I grew up, you know, with, with my family, you know, the drinkard singers, it was, their, it was their life, the life that they led, you know, that made me, you know, believe in God and, 
get closer, draw closer to God too, and know who God was. He was real because of my family, you know, Dion, you know, her mother, my mother, uh, my uncles, you know, and uh, it just trickled down to all of us. We're all part of the New Hope Baptist Church in Newark. As we were raised in the church, from the beginning, St. Luke, my grandfather ministered, migrated into New Hope Baptist Church. That's where we'll be. Gospel music. Yes, I did. Where? In New Hope Baptist Church. Where is that? In New, New Jersey. That's where I started. It's where most all of my family went to New Hope. I started at about I think five. I think I can remember singing at five in the junior choir. And as I progressively got older, then you moved up to the inspirational choir, and then, you know, the adult choir. But I stayed in church. <laughs> I stayed in church. I worked at New Hope Baptist Church for 50 years teaching. They went to church, my mother and them, but they went to church. They had an 8 o'clock service, 11 o'clock service, and then you have some going in the night. Then you have rehearsals during the week. You had to go to, and so we would go always go with my mother to rehearsals, you know. He hated church. I hated church. <laughs> I hated church. <laughs> we would be down in the basement. They had a bowling a bowling alley downstairs, and so we'd be downstairs playing while they went to church. So we was old, we was in church a lot. You know what I'm saying so it was so early. First it was like you know I had to go. There was just no no option. <laughs> but as I got older, I loved going. It was a sense of a, a family. Um, I knew that my family, we would all be together on that day, on Sunday at New Hope. People need to know, where Whitney, where my sissy, you know, where, where we all come from, where Dion, where we all come from, where Dee Dee, God rest her soul, where she comes from, you know, and that's something is you can't say it, you know, you, I can say it, but you have to really feel it to understand what I'm talking about. You know, I'm on the road so much doing what I do, performing. Yeah, you know, most Sundays I am on a stage somewhere. And uh, Saturday nights are very, very late. So I get up for 11 o'clock service sometimes. It is almost not possible to do. But you don't have to be in a building to have church. You carry church with you everywhere you go in your heart. I'll tell Cynthia, I'm gonna send you one by one, one boy, little bitty baby, he was born. Born, he was born in Bethlehem. <laughs> For Paul and Silas, one for a little bitty baby was born, born, born in Bethlehem. When go after Leah, how shall I send thee? I'm going to send thee three by three, three for the Hebrew children. Two for Paul and Silas, one for a little bitty baby he was born, born, he was born in Bethlehem.
a feeling. You're singing the Bible in, in verse. That's what you're doing. Um, when I started singing and I started to tour, I always made sure that I gave praise and, and, and worship to the Lord because he's worthy. Brings out the faith that you have in whatever God you serve. I know many at this moment are thinking, Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston, they don't have anything in common at all. She's a girl, you're a boy. You're white, she's black. Well, you'd be wrong about that. So off you go, Whitney. Off you go to your heavenly father. And when you sing before him, don't you worry. You'll be good enough. This was a gift that Whitney gave all of her aunts and uncles that says, with much love and admiration, love Whitney. This here is Nana, which is Dion's mom. Mm -hmm. on the end here. That's Aunt Sissy. That's Whitney's mom. Right here is my mom. Right here is Judy Clay. She's a cousin. And back here is Larry's father, Uncle Larry. Hmm? Uncle Larry. That's Judy Clay, Uncle Larry. Right here is their dad, Nicholas Drinker. That's Nicholas Drinker. And right here is Aunt Reby, the prayer warrior, Marie Epps. Uh, they always wore their robes when they did everything. So that was his signature with DS up at the top, Drinker Singers. When I heard the sisters, you know, Aunt Reby with the tambourine, you know, it was glorious. I'm telling you, really glorious. Those women had it going on. Uh, that's my music. About 15, 16 years old. And we did exactly what the, the drinkers did. Dion's mom, Aunt Lee, being the matriarch of the family, she told them, make, make your decision. You know, it's either going to be you're singing for the Lord, you know, or you're you singing for the world. Now, Lee was very strict, and she, she was, it was forbidden, you know, at that particular time for her to even think about singing, you know, uh, you know, R&B or pop. I sing popular music, and I sing gospel music. I sing jazz. I sing everything. I sing music. The fact that Dion had a popular voice, the fact that um, Bacharach and David wrote so many beautiful things for her, and the chemistry was so well, and, and Aunt Lee trusted them, you know, I think that's why she blessed, you know, the whole mission because Dion was singing about something. Dion earned her way through school by doing sessions. We uh, did our first background session for the Drifters, a song called Mexican Divorce that was No, Patricia, if I come and do this, you will want you. He wants us to do, wants us to all come together and sing. Yeah. Have you asked Dion? Have you asked yeah. her about it? And she said, yeah? Yeah. Okay, well then we'll get together some time. I am Whitney Houston. I'm the daughter of Sissy and John Houston. And Dion is my first cousin, and very proud of that. And it's my life. I love gospel music because I love the Lord. I love to hear my mother sing gospel. Tell you about Sissy. <laughs> Sissy Houston is my aunt. I grew up with her and love her to death. And what can I tell you? That's family. Um, I traveled a lot with Dion as a youngster. It was always music in our house, always. I just heard gospel all in my family. You know, we'd have Christmas dinner and then we'd sing. We'd have Thanksgiving dinner and then we'd all sing. So it was a common thing in my family to hear singing. So Dion had a group called the Gospel Lairs. Mm -hmm. We started the Gospel Lairs, I think we were... Dee Dee is my cousin, and I have a whole family of some really incredible, talented people. 
Whitney used to scream in the basement all the time because I had <laughs> I had mirrors down because that's where we rehearsed in my house. Then when she wanted to sing, she would make us go downstairs and she would be singing <laughs> with, with the little, and she'd make us get brooms and play the guitars and play the drums and all that stuff. I always heard music in my home. Uh, my brother started much earlier. We were, we were the younger ones, Michael and I. Gary started singing very, very, very young, so I heard him all the time sing. Oh, I love gospel. Uh, it's in my soul. It's in my soul, it's in my heart. Gospel will and has always been my first love. That's what taught me to sing, was gospel. We as a family have, have put so much into the, not only into the gospel industry, but into music itself.